Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our talkback section, which is called Actor Spokey. Um, thank you so much for sticking around during the film. We had such a great time making it. Um, hope you had a good time watching it. We're going to get into some of the nitty gritty. And we invited the director for this particular episode to join us today. We're going to go around our little virtual table here. We're just going to introduce themselves and let you know what they did for this particular episode. Um, I'm Sarah Moore. My pronouns are she, her. I was that very talkative sword, Beatrice. Um, and she just has a lot to say. Uh, and I have a feeling that she's not done <laughs> for this season. Um, if you are looking for me anywhere else on the internet, I am uh, Pixies and Pins pretty much everywhere. Um, and you can also find me here on Friday nights on Sarah's Table this week. I'm going to be playing um, a game called Dead After Dinner, where we kill the patriarch and then squabble over his will. So we'll see you at 5 p.m. on Friday for that. Uh, let's hop on over to the person right next to me. So, uh, Peter, what did you do for this episode? I I had the directing duty off. I, I got to take a break from directing. All I did on this episode was edit it. And I had so much fun editing the footage that uh, Rennie directed and put together. It was great. Uh, it, it was so fun. Uh, I mean, I was la I've was i seen this film now 20 times. And just now watching it, I'm laughing like the whole time. Uh, so, yeah. I, uh, so, I, yeah. I'm Peter Atkinson. I'm on Gen Con TV, Actor Roki. Uh, you can find me. Actually, probably the best way to find me is just through Sarah. Yeah, that's that's true. Just just hit me up. I'll let you know where he is. I have tabs on him at all times. Shh, don't tell him. Um, what about you, Steve? Well, uh, hello. I'm Steve Connard. I'm the uh, the the scribe, I guess. I translate my booster into English. It's a tough job. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot of fun with this particular this particular episode. was was great. You know, I, I was reminded of aliens when. Uh, James Cameron goes, I thought Bill Paxson was going to be just annoying. Everybody would hate him and everybody ended up loving him. And so the same thing with the sword and the, and the bow, you know, I'm like, <laughs> am I right? These guys too annoying. I don't know. I thought they were great. Good job. <laughs> hey, you Perfect. can't fix it. Feature it, man. I mean, it's, they're there. You got to run with it. <laughs> just got to play the cards for <laughs> Um, Let's hop on over to Mike. Who are you? Uh, uh, I'm Mike Boozer. Uh, I am uh, the game master. I'm the one who runs the stuff that Steve takes, that I drive Steve with fits about <laughs> providing the stuff that I that I run in a game. So I'm the guy that does that. Actually, uh, I'm a he, him, and uh, you really can't find me, so don't look. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm a game master. I run the game uh, and uh, every uh, week and uh, or every uh, every time, and uh, it's exciting and fun, and let's let's see what happens next. Great. All right. Well, I mean, I guess that leaves only one person that we haven't chatted with. Rennie. Hey, everybody. I'm Rennie. Uh, you can, I'm, I was the director of this episode. Um, and uh, I had the pleasure of uh, actually playing Beatrice on set, Sarah. So yeah. You are um, welcome. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I got to say that um, uh, the characters are not irritating on on set. Uh, one of our cameramen, um, camera people, uh, Rex Waters, played uh, uh, had to sort of sub in for Hugh, uh, even though Dylan had recorded it. So uh, we had a good time just sort of playing it, and we laughed a lot. I, every people were amused, and so I think that that tag at the very end, where this sort of just bickering, it was just perfect. It was such such a fun fun thing to direct and to and to watch happen. So those are good words. I was actually wondering what it was like to film that because I feel like there was a lot of back and forth between the bow and the sword. And like, mm -hmm. how often was it just like them, the actors hanging out, while other people read stuff? Well, well, you know, we, you know, we went full bore there, Sarah. Um, so I, I'm sort of sitting right off camera and then uh, Rex was right behind me. And so uh, they were, I mean, they were right in it and we were hardcore. We weren't just, we weren't marking the lines. We were full in it, bickering and, and playing it up. Um, so, and I think that actually helped when we, um, so we actually directed Dylan before that. So hmm. I think we had directed Dylan's and recorded Dylan's uh, voiceover before we went in and filmed the sequences. 
And then, so that helped me to know what to actually do with the, with the character in order to write some oh, comedy. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I mean, like, cause I got Dylan's files separate. They were like a separate package of audio files from the rest of the yeah. shoot. So as an editor, I know a way of knowing, I just assumed that you filmed him, that you recorded his video after, but you recorded it before. Uh, okay. Well, I, I mean, as an editor, that's really exciting to know these things. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, it was uh, uh, we we did it um, in order to make you good use of the time because there was a couple other actors who had not um, were not in uh, were not quite ready yet. So and and Dylan was ready. Oh, so it's good, there and, good. Yeah. That, yeah, that's actually the most important job of the director is make good use of the time. <laughs> if it's after Roki, uh, you have only got one night to shoot a thirty minute uh, movie. Uh, yeah. Well, I will tell you that um, I, I think uh, you you guys gave me a pretty easy job this time uh because uh there was only 21 pages not the one like the 26 that you normally get mm -hmm. peter um, i don't know how you do it but you're able to rock out those 26 pages before 10 and i really pushed that limit to the uh, you know last week so uh, you, you're, you're you're getting there it just takes a little time and practice and also you know uh you're using off uh, my blocking notes uh so um that makes it harder when you aren't you know like i i don't know I, you did great don't don't beat yourself no, up you. you did fantastic you. i yeah, yeah so what did you i mean what was it like directing an actor of yeah. so yeah that's a, that's a, this is a really great a good question so um for those of you who don't know uh uh my production company zombie orifice entertainment sort of sits in the back and uh what normally happens is people sit and uh, act in front of the green screen and Peter sits at a table and will help to sort of orchestrate what happens, make sure it all ha comes together. So in a lot of ways, Peter both produces, ADs, and directs everything all at the same time. But what happens is uh, uh, we, we have another screen where we can see all of the, the setups and what is being recorded. So then Peter sometimes le leans on a zombie Orpheus to let him know, like, do we have the right footage and coverage? I actually moved a, a screen to the director's table so that I could see what footage was. And I leaned on Leo to be the scripty. So Leo was making sure that the lines were being covered and I was watching what was being captured. <clears throat> it was, uh, uh, so I had already seen a lot of this happening. So I was coming in familiar, but it is a different thing than shooting film or doing stage. I and mean, we're, folks, we're doing 25, you know, 25 pages in four hours. And that is an incredible thing. Also, um, what it done, man. It's, it's, too, it done. it's too much. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It is a lot. For one night. And it's crazy. It is, it is a lot. Um, and also, um, we don't do a lot of action. There's not. Um, there is some choreography, but most of it. It for most of the time, it's a, a lot of just uh, more static shots and Locking frames. Heads. So there's a lot of narrative. Yeah. But I think over the last three years, you know, we've really done. A, um, you know, Peter and Steve have done an amazing job of refining how to make this work. And I got to say, I really loved how this turned out. I mean, it. I, well, I know it, there was, you know, something. Yeah, it was great. Like listening, because I, you know, as an editor, I got all the footage, so I'm hearing, I'm seeing all the, and we, you know, for anybody watching, if you're curious, we just turn the cameras on. The way we can get through that many lines, that many pages in one night. So we just turn all the cameras on, light the whole space, and just free, and then just let it roll for for four or five hours, however long it takes us to get through it. So I'm listening to you, Rene. You were like calling out like camera stuff, and I'm like, oh, is the director supposed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what do you mean? Like, what what was what was I like, coming out? <clears throat> just, mean, uh... well, no, I mean, I noticed you were keeping. I know you know you just mentioned that you put a monitor up there so you could see yeah. the uh, yeah. the the um the cameras and i have to admit that when i'm directing i what i'm doing is i'm look watching the actors for the performance and i'm looking at the script to make sure you know i don't care if they change change their line a little bit but i just want to make sure they don't miss something that's crucial to the plot yeah and having a also keeping an eye on cameras i i know that most directors do that i just can't do it i, I just i don't have the bandwidth to be shifting my eye from the cameras to the actors to uh the script yeah. so i was impressed that you were able to do that because i just rely you know when i'm directing i just rely on on well basically on leo you know, to make sure we get it you know well that's why i told you. leo i told thank you very much um i told leo to uh look 
very carefully and to watch the lines, to make sure that we hit the lines correctly. So I, I leaned on her on that. Um, I pay attention to the cameras because uh, I know that that's what you need. And as much as I love working with the actors, and I did, I was able to work with them. In fact, that's what slowed me down a little bit. I think you probably noticed that, is that I was trying to sort of set, well, what, what is your motivation? Why are you doing this? And hopefully that did come. Yeah, that director stuff. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that part yeah, I understood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it was it was it was great fun. It was really great fun, and we have a great crew, and and the cast rolled with it, and oh, uh, the script great. was fun. People had a good time. Cool. Was there any moments, um, Mike, when you were watching that like surprised you in the way that it was translated to screen from the table? Uh, this time, uh, no. I, I think I think for the most part, every time it's translated. It's uh, Steve does such a good job. Uh, Steve does such a good job. I'm going to compliment Steve's an old friend, and usually I don't compliment him because he's an old oh, friend. Oh, don't don't but, compliment Steve. But, uh, oh, no. but Steve <laughs> Steve does such a good job at like uh, I'll say something, and then he goes, "Oh, we'll take it to this level because this is what you know. This is what Mike's thinking, or this is what we should do in the you know." So he always sends me the script, and I read it, and I go, "It's great." I don't really usually have any feedback from Steve on the script. It's like, yeah, that's demonstratively better than all the NPCs I had to play during the role playing <laughs> session, you know, and what they said. I mean, the kernels are in there, the things I think of, which is great, you know, the story of the, the frog and the scorpion, which is just silly because it's the wrong story. And the, you know, the punchline, the, at the end, the line is like, no, that's not the that's not the story. So, you know, yeah. but I came up with that and I ran it. I said, Steve, wouldn't this be fun? I think this is funny. And he goes, yeah, that's really good. Let's do it. So, um, but but mo for the most part, I think, I think, you know, it always comes out much better than it's role played. But but the role playing, the role playing drives the script, which is what, you know, you have to have. It's like everything that's happened does happen. Uh, in the script, but it's um, but it's you know enhanced, and which is always nice. Um, when you're role playing, it's always about you have to play like when you guys say I play this character, I play this. Like when you're role playing, the DM has to play Beatrice, Hugh, Roy Calicus, Rodarno, all the NPCs. So it you know it's it it makes it tough, but you just got to have a idea of where you're going and then see what the see what the mm -hmm. darn player. Do you have do you have a an NPC that you prefer to play or conversely one that you do not like playing like but, is um, there well i created beatrice and now it's like oh my god what am i i gotta get her out of there not, well, not, I mean, not because of make you. her not a no, sword and she'll I, be yeah, fine I, well well that's where we're going but I mean, <laughs> beatrice was by, by the way beatrice is my favorite to start with just because it was so fun was so interesting and it, it, you know, it's going along, but, but now it's like, and we're kind of putting that in of like, oh yeah, these two are lunatics. I mean, they're just like, they're off, the, they're off the rails, you know? So that's fun. Um, my favorite character is Rodarno because Rodarno is this, um, you know, a little more complicated character. Uh, like Calicus is pretty straightforward. This is, you know, I'm in charge. This is what I want. Rodarno is like in the middle, playing both sides of the field, um, can do lots of fun. So I like those two right now. Those, um, those two characters as a pair are so amazing. I mean, oh, I yeah. just, so good like, they, it's so odd couple and it works yeah. so well. It's well, good. and as a plot device, Rodarno is so great because you can just like send him in and be like slapping the characters over the head with like hey man the plot's over here like I, any <laughs> yeah. any time that you need to Sarah, <laughs> like Sarah knows that the DM sure Sarah, Sarah absolutely knows it's very true you could use like, it you could just NPCs you just use them to go yeah, please uh, look a, over in this direction slap. I'm begging you <laughs> slap here here's the info it's right in front of your face yeah, as a, as a sort of a side, um, one of the uh, to give the the audience a little 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 uh, nugget of things that happen in the background. So uh, we were trying to figure out uh, what Scott would wear and to time it out because we were um, because Scott comes in as 
uh, as Redarno, of course, Scott C. Brown plays Redarno, but there was actually two different moments, one in front of the Vim and Vigor, and then one going into the Vrykolikis mansion. And so as I was talking with Sean Bandersnatch and the, the, the costuming team, we were trying to figure out timing because the, the getup that Redarno wears you know, is a lot of makeup. Uh, uh, we call it the tout, T-O-U-T, right? And, but there was a lot of makeup and that would take a lot of time to take off. And it was sort of a, a potential timing problem. And uh, so we were, we said, well, maybe Scott doesn't want to do it. And so, <laughs> no, so Scott, Scott yeah. will take any opportunity he can to dress and drag. I'm just saying. <laughs> this, <It's true. laughs> this is, this is true. I, we laid it out to Scott and said, no, Peter said that I could wear that last time and I wasn't <laughs> able to. I am wearing the tout. Like Scott was adamant. <laughs> he was so, so mad at me that I didn't let it. At the, when we did the movie, the Barbarians movie, and I just didn't have time for all that nonsense. <laughs> he was upset. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Redemption. He got to put exactly. the purple wig on for this episode. So I just put that on you, Rennie. I was just like, okay, Rennie's problem now. It's, Someone else it, will it, take care of it. <laughs> You know, the one thing, one of the cool things about all of this, though, doing this show is that we get actors, actors who are very talented, one thing, but then you give them a character that they keep on coming back to play and they, they know that character. And so they just bring this level of, like, I trust them. I mm-hmm. give them the words, you know, Steve, I give them Steve's words and I just say, this is, this is your motivate. This is why you're doing this. And Scott goes, oh, okay. Bam. And it's mm-hmm. brilliant. Marcus, bam! Like he, Marcus gave me four different adjustments at the very end. You saw that, Peter, in, in the yeah. edits, and yeah. uh, it's just so great to work with such talented people. So, so Rennie, let me let me tell you the part that I thought that was actually surprising and in a really really good way. So, Peter and I always watch a fine cut, you know, yeah. early to to review, and so I get to watch an earlier cut of the yeah, film. like really or like way like. Hours ago, like like hours ago, like, <laughs> we, like we we did that Wednesday morning. Like, this morning we did this morning. Two, we three had plenty o'clock. Of time we to, watched it. Yeah, yeah. I, like only fifteen items on my punch list. Yeah, we got through it. <laughs> the part that I really liked was I I remember writing the scene very well, and then just the way you did it was was brilliant. Like when they when they all like move into the dining hall and they're mm-hmm. sitting down at the table, and Rodarno's popping around giving them drinks, wine. I, I just like how Brachelicus is just staring at them and they're all like nervous. And, 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 and it's sort of like a family guy episode where it's extended to the point where like even the viewers getting nervous, right? You're like, and then of course Koss comes in, which is Dylan is great. It's like, Oh, hi, uh, Brachelicus. Hi, <laughs> oh, hey, man. Uh, how you doing? You, you look great, by the way. You look fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Yeah, you so look, good. You look Please. Awesome. Please yeah, don't eat us. Down. You look so nice. I'm glad you caught that, Steve. Um, that was one of the directions we gave it. I gave at the very beginning is that uh, um, uh, you. So you can be a little nervous, like you're, and and they were they were. You can be a little nervous. Uh, he tried to eat you before. <laughs> yes. Like, so that's why you're like tentative, right? But you trust Rodarno. You do trust him, but you're worried about like that. And so they really played through that very consistently. And, but then I think I said, I said, look, you're going to come into this place. But then it occurs to you that he just killed a witch for you. Like he, he just basically defeated Orthy Bob. So I think you're okay. I'm like, oh, so they're able to transition. They just did a great job transitioning. To, and that, again, also good, good writing there. So. Yeah, oh, Steve, like- oh, a no, masterful writing. I mean, you do <laughs> you nail it every episode, but this episode in particular, the writing was perfect. I agree. Totally. Yeah, it was an interesting point about the writing and uh, the. So Steve and I had a previous conversation about how I said, well, you know, these two, Hugh and Hugh and, uh, and Beatrice, Beatrice have to really <laughs> Hugh and Sarah. You know, yeah, Hugh and Sarah. <laughs> it's just like I, was, I almost said Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to, they have, you, you know, know. They're, they're just gonna, they're just gonna bicker. And, you know, we're decided they're gonna bicker, they're gonna have a fight. And, I, you know, when I'm DMing it, I just made it as bad as I could, as far as bad as far well, as Well, that was a great, I, I remember, I remember the meeting with you, Mike, you and Steve and I all got together to like start talking about season, you know, this, this series. Yeah. And I don't know really where the idea came from. I know it wasn't my idea, I'm, I'm, but it was like, well, what if these two, 
magic items. Yeah, because they meet in the previous series and they're like, oh, lost lovers, and they're finally reunited and oh, happy forever, you know? Yeah. And it's like new series come out. These two are just hate each other. They're just like bickery <laughs> all the time. They're just gonna passionate. Drive it just crazy. they're passionate, is I, what I, it yeah. is. I, it, yeah, it was a great device. It was, you know. <laughs> Uh, that yeah, was it's yeah, and, that, and then well Steve and Steve built that up in the script, which was great because I was I threw it I threw it all against the wall. I said, Steve, I got this is what I got, you know. With like when I say goes, Oh yeah, that's fine. I, I it, it works it worked well. So, so, so good. we did it. But I, yeah, I do like it. Yeah, they are Sarah, to your point, I think I think it's like, you know, the old married couple. They're, they're, yeah, they know each yeah. other. You know, they Way just worse. constantly bicker. Yeah, but like, and what would they the be end, without each other, right? Yeah, like, she and was maybe, yeah, and maybe in the end they do love each other, but it's not, you know, but they're just mad. I mean, they put the fun and dysfunctional. Yeah, they're just, <laughs> really, too. They're, they're, they're a dysfunctional couple. So yeah. you know, we uh, where I used to live in, in Seattle, we had this uh, pizzeria near our house that was called New York Pizza. And there was this, this old couple that had lived their entire lives in New York. And for whatever reason, they moved to Seattle. And people would go in and they made great New York pizza. But they were doing like a stage show during the whole thing. And they were just bickering and yelling at each other. Like you'd go in and order pizza and they'd just be yelling at each other the whole time. It's just like, it's, I go, is this a... It's part of the show. <laughs> it's like, I get a exactly pizza in a show. <laughs> By the way, the one thing I do like about the sword and the uh, and the bow, uh, you know, people who play D and D, you know, players want magical items. You know, they hoard magical items. They got a bunch of. I just think it's funny. There's these really powerful magical items that are sentient, and they're so annoying that they just, you know, <laughs> just wants wants like, some... can we just leave them here? Yeah. <laughs> the magic items are cursed. It's not clear if players are cursed because of it, but but they don't want them anymore. It's like I don't care what you can do. You're just annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> and yet yeah, they that's... never walk away from them. No, uh, <laughs> good. We'll we'll see how that works out. That's a good. That's a good one. So it's a good setup. I like the setup here we got going. So yeah. Just to say. So, Mr. Dungeon Master, any uh, any hints, any clues about what's going to happen in the next episode? Any prognostications? Any spoilers? Well, I mean, I mean, I think uh, some things were laid out there. These two are on the run from uh, one of the most powerful kingdoms in the world. Um, they got setites after them, and they got they got, they got setites right. after them. They have uh, they have uh, they have Cyprian the king. Cyprian the king. <laughs> Some is not happy with them. They uh, they're stolen away by the mystery stable boy Sebastian, who um, is maybe dead. We don't know. Who you, you know? Killed him. Maybe you murdered maybe him. dead. You killed him. No, I didn't kill him. <laughs> no, I love him. He was great. Look, who knows? Maybe maybe Sebastian's dead. Maybe Sebastian's not dead. Let's find out. I think is how we're gonna go. But I, but you know. It's it's gonna get ugly before it gets better. <laughs> I can guarantee. It. <laughs> Huzzah! Huzzah! But I hope they do in fact go see Cosmo because I cast the actor and oh, he's, he's in wardrobe right now. So <laughs> noted. <laughs> Cosmo yeah. is on. Well, Rodarno laid it out. Go see Cosmo. Yeah. Go see Cosmo, go and see then Cosmo. you probably want to go to Sheol. And luckily, we have a actual player. Yeah, right who now. could maybe hopefully <laughs> is taking notes about like where the story should be going. <laughs> I don't know but, yeah, could, yeah no, they're behind it's, you, Renny. It's going it's... well. We've got we've got deceit. We've got uh, we've got betrayal. Well, we've got a curse. We've got everything we need. <laughs> so that's an interesting question for Renny. I you know yeah. you were a player in the RPG yeah. session that created mm -hmm. this story. And so you sat there at the table with Mike yeah. and Lexi and Bryce and Megan and had a great time and created a story. And then it, it went through a process and then you directed the screenplay with the actors. That was the adaptation. So what, I think that's the first, you know, you've been an actor before, but this was certainly the first time you've directed a script that, you indirectly help create? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, very, very good question, Peter, uh, because I had played um, in the season one, 
I had played an RPG character. I, I, I played a character, um, Armando. And then uh, we were all testing this stuff out. And I, did, I had heard, I, I'd gotten the sense that it, maybe it wasn't me, but that there was just this interesting dynamic between the tabletop players and the actors, because some of the things that the actors were doing were not necessarily in line with what the tabletop players had been actually doing. And people mm-hmm. weren't used to that dynamic. Like, they're like, well, no, this is what I would be doing. Like, my character does it this way. And I don't know if it was Armand or whatever, but I just remember that happening. And so I made it a point of distancing my mind, of distancing myself from what I do at the table with what the actors bring. And so first thing what's very strange is that Andy, um, Andy Dokorowski had done Archibald. And so Andy had already gone one direction. And then... Um, Kyle has stepped into this role and Kyle came to me last week and said, so can you tell me, like, tell me about Archibald? What do I need to know? How should I do this? And I, and I said, so I gave them, you know, I gave Kyle some ideas and some of the voicing, but I then said, but you're the actor and you get to take the words and move it forward. That is your job. That is not, and I will direct you but I'm not going to have the RPG session influence that choice because the writer is writing stuff. And so Steve has made some choices that may, may not have happened at the table either. And so I, I took Thank that God. experience that I had. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. Well, that was another thing um, that the table session that we had, there was no action, right? Like we just talked the entire time at the table and look how beautiful <laughs> the script came out. Like it was really good. It was lots of words. So anyway, it, it wasn't a big deal for me because I had already mentally distances myself from the RPG and, uh, and I love what Kyle's doing. And so, you know, you give power to the actors and they'll, they'll take it away. Yeah. You know, the funny thing was there was a line that you said during the RPG and I remember writing it down going, that's going straight in the script unchanged. And it did. I don't know if you noticed it. Do you remember which line that was? Um, no. <laughs> what, what line was it? I, I say something. Or he's like going, Steve. he goes, yeah, but our problem could be your next meal. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just flat said meal. that. And I'm like, oh, that's a great line. <laughs> our problem could be your next meal. meal. Even it. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's right. And we were talking, we were talking with the, um, uh, about the person who uh, we stole the bow, bow from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So, Renny, I have one more question for you. Yes, um, yes. You at this point in the process now have been um, a role player. You have been an actor, and now you have been the director. Yeah. Which do you like best? Oh, oh, that's really that's really hard because I think they all bring levels of satisfaction. Um, I no, love you. Have to, choose I have to choose your favorite one. child. You have to. Oh, oh dear, that's <laughs> that's horrible. That is really really bad. I love yeah. being a guest on Aster, Actor Spoking. That's no, what no, you can't choose that. That is a pop out answer. That's so, what a lame, lame Do you have to wear a cup when you're straddling that fence, buddy? Pick <laughs> a role. Well, okay. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to pick this answer. Okay. So if I pick, uh, I like directing. Well, Peter's the director, and mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. want to put Peter in a weird, threatened position. If I say, if I don't, I will say not threaten R- my boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if I don't say, um, if I, if I, if I uh, don't say RPG, mm-hmm. then Boozer will be upset. And Boozer is also my DM on every mm-hmm. Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So okay, and so I, uh, and also I leave, don't yeah. upset your boss. Got it. Next. Yes, yes. <laughs> and if I say actor, mm-hmm. I'm not that good. So mm. then suddenly I'd be stuck doing something that would bring down the quality of actor Oki. Mm. So pretty, I, pretty mm. good, 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 good. Now, trust me, you just acknowledge I'm no. the director. You're pretty good as an actor. Oh, Don't well, sell yourself thank short. You. Th- thank you. Thank you. Um, I look forward to seeing how I did in the mo- Christmas movie. Yeah, I really me too. Yeah, it's yeah, for yeah. a different <laughs> holiday now, Renny. It's oh, no longer the, the Christmas val- movie. The Valentine's Day party. I, 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 Earth Day. The Earth Day movie. We're, we're backing up. Oh, sorry. The Ready, Easter, Ready, Ready, Halloween, maybe Halloween movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ready, Halloween don't worry movie. about me. You're clearly not a good RPG. Person. Yeah. Uh, very, very easy. Well, by the way, you know what, Renny? You know, you, you're no, up for next. Not true, is when saying. I go on vacation, you're gonna write the next. Script. Right. So you oh, haven't yeah. written yet. Okay, you haven't written yet. So okay. we're gonna have to. Take I will a pick. One, doing I will that. pick one. If I had to sit in and do just one and not do any of the others, because I really do enjoy all of them. 
I love directing. I really, really do. And I understand Peter loves working with actors. I mm. love the creative, collaborative model of working I, with other people. I, I love, love this. I don't want to direct every freaking episode. So good. Good. We oh, can, wow. We, we have it we on can, stream, everyone. We can. Mm. We can yeah. I, I, I got no problem not directing every single episode. I, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you'll, really, you'll, get, I really you'll, you'll do it again. Don't worry. Great. Great. Aww. Love to have you back. I think you Thank did a great you. job. Thank yeah. You. Rennie will um RP and act and direct and write his side quest episode. Um <laughs> Archibald yeah. where, side quest. Where it's just Archibald uh, all the way down is what it is. Solo adventure, right? <laughs> Solo adventure. Solo Archibald in our He's also Sarah, gonna Sarah's going to DM, well. DM it. Oh, with I'll DM Mike. it. Yeah, yeah, Sarah's going to DM it. All of <laughs> yeah, us. So instead of four yeah. players, there will be four DMs and then just one. Uh, and then oh. you will play Archibald yes. by yourself. And then yes. you I think we should do that. Else. I think okay, great. Um, I, yeah, no, I'm sending. I'm yeah. sending out the call sheet now, and, can, and with no. He could direct himself too. I mean, he could direct himself. But who's going to edit? I, why do I always get stuck doing the no, editing? No, no, Rennie will also edit. He's going to edit. One man show. This little vein starting to pop out right here. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. Listen, it's on the internet, so it has to be true. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. You're all. welcome. I feel like I really helped. So. Are you, is he going to DM his RPG session? That, oh my God. It. I want to see that. I want right. to see it filmed. This is going to be a weird <laughs> art house piece and I'm here for it. I think we're, we're all, I think good. the four of us, the four of us on this call, except for uh, Rennie, the four of us are going to we'll co-DM DM. an Archibald oh. side quest. Yeah. That would be you, awesome. You heard it here first. Blow it's all going to happen mind. inside Archibald's mind so that all the NPCs can also be versions of Archibald. Oh, yeah. Especially Beatrice, right? Especially Beatrice. We'll have to be like a Beatrice. It's like maybe it's Perfect. Arch, it's Beatrice, but, the, but wearing the hat. Arch like Beatrice? The sword, but, yeah, I love it. Well, it's pretty. Did we have the episode Archibald. name already. Sorry. Dude. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm... What was the name? Arch of Beatrice. Arch of Beatrice. Arch of Beatrice. They could switch places somehow. Whoa, oh, no. that would be wild. Oh. Anyway, Mike, the, if you want to use switching places. The Disney film? Um, the, the parent and the mother. The parent the trap? What? The parent <laughs> trap. Is that the one where they switch yeah. places? Yeah, yeah. 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 side quest. Parent trap. Parent trap. No one will notice that it's a in sword the, instead of a man. No one will. In the middle of the night, Beatrice takes control of Archibald, and oh, they go off like on a, a side like quest. a Freaky Friday situation. Yeah. <laughs> Wild night at the Vim and Vigor. And Archibald's yeah. running around going, "You want to hear a poem?" Yeah, I tell you the poem. It's a, cl it's a classic. Uh, it's a classic uh, plot device. I love but it. I never. I never. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to ADR you doing each other's lines. It'll be great. It'll be just like drunk history. <laughs> yeah. Where you have to say it. And then while everyone I'm does talking. it will then, literally then everyone be does drunk their version of some Beatrice line and overlay. This is gonna be That'll wonderful. Be bookends with the whole Sally, this the Ann Carlton episode where she plays Sally and all the different yeah. <laughs> crazy characters. I'm actually getting scared that you actually are thinking about doing this. I think we're, I think we just moved to it. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be. Peter likes to say, you know, we could do anything we want because we're in charge. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Those guys can do everything they want. If we all agree on something, it's it's going to happen. Thanks for Canon. Cool. Canon. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, I feel like perhaps we have spun to the end of our <laughs> evening yeah. with this um thank you all so much for coming let's do a quick uh around the table uh if anybody would like to plug anything that we ha they have coming up um i know that a lot of you are not super uh active on socials but i'm gonna make you say them anyway so um peter yeah uh so uh all right sarah tell everybody what i've got coming up Great, cool. Okay, um, Peter has some things coming up for World of Caldia. In fact, next week, uh, we'll be back here for another RPG session, which uh, involves Mike Boozer at the DM, which I'm fairly certain that I'm also um, taking his right now so he doesn't have to say anything. Uh, nice. Right here on uh, Wednesday, I think we're in February already then, yeah? Is that real? Did I make that up? Yeah. Sounds about right. It's about right. February first, Wednesday, February first will be uh, the second episode, beginning of the second cycle, um, second episode of 
series four. It's the RPG session. Um, and then, you know, we have some other things coming up. World of Chaldea will continue this ongoing series. Uh, we're going to be at GaryCon in March. And um, one day you will see the movie that we shot before Christmas. We don't know when it's going to be. We like to keep you on your toes. It's going to be a surprise. And if you want to find <laughs> Peter, you can look uh, at World of Chaldea on all of our socials where uh, he has, I'm going to be nice and say he's the one that's doing it, but that's a lie. Um, I'm doing it, but it is all his stuff. Um, and if you want to find him, I, I don't know. Don't try to find him. Just call me and I'll let you know where he is. Um, Mike, do you want to plug anything aside from the RPG session? No, uh, Mike? Once again, badges. For, I work for Gen Con. There you I go. work for Gen Con. I work for... I work for Gen Con, so uh, that's my day job. Uh, badges go on sale this Sunday, so um, get on and get your badges uh, for Gen Con. If you have any, if you have any questions, you can email me or one of my associates at customer service at GenCon dot com for yeah. any information about how to get your badge. Yeah, Ooh. or if you just like want to let Mike know he's doing a great job as a DM. Sure. Or like tell him that he like looks nice today. You can also tell I, him that. I did get one of those compliments. It was really nice. See, that's <laughs> nice. It's it's good, it's a good boost. Yeah. Steve, do you want to plug anything besides Dr. Oki? Well, I mean, when I'm not writing scripts, one of the things I do on my other hat is I maintain our website. You know, I'm like a one man band. Well, Moon helps me just two man band. Yeah. Anyway, so we have a lot of cool stuff on the website. If we're slow, I apologize. I'm probably writing or doing something else. But anyway, you can go there. We have all of our art all the information about our actors. We try to keep update their stats, um, their socials. Anyway, um, also you can get a hold of us through me or Peter. Our email addresses are on the site. So I'm not on social. Sorry, I'm boring. Um, you can you can email Steve, tell him how great his scripts are. If or not. <laughs> you could have done better. Right. I mean, <laughs> they're great. criticism. They're I saw wonderful. a typo in there. It's I okay to see... receive, Steve. It's okay to receive. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Um, Rennie, what do you have yeah. coming up? Oh, yeah. So um, you can find me on various socials as Rennie Francis or Rennie.Eructo on Twitter. Um, also, uh, Zombie Orpheus Entertainment. So if you go to zombieorpheus.com, we have lots of great stuff coming up. But I wanted to tell you about a really fun thing. Uh, my son has never played Dungeons & Dragons in his life. And he's he's, he's a Forty guy who does that type of thing, but he came to me last week, two weeks ago, and said, "Hey, me and my buddies want to play D and D. We want to play D and D." And I said, "Hey, how would you like to stream your first time on D and D?" So I am going to live stream a bunch of high schoolers, four high schoolers, trying the very first time to play D and D, and we're going to see how that goes. Um, I am so that will be in February, and we'll get you more information as we push it out. But uh, um, there you go. That's what's happening. Oh. Wild. <laughs> Let me know if you want that translated into a script. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I'm, right? I'm interested in. Yeah, in it can be fun. Tangent, a side quest, if you will. Yep. Um. Uh, you can find me all over socials at Pixies and Pins, and uh, I will be at Gary Khan representing Actor Oki, and uh, I am often here doing things. Um, like I said, Friday nights, Sarah's Table, 5 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash GenCon TV. We're doing uh, Dead After Dinner on Friday. Next Friday, we're doing Chew, which is based on the comic book where you get to be a zombie that eats dead people to find out what happened to them going to be a treat um and we have a lot of fun stuff coming up and also uh we just did a charity game to benefit the trevor project um we raised about 350 dollars, but the link is still open and our goal is 500 but we're keeping that link open for like a month and i can guarantee that we can just like completely blow that number out of the water so it is actually in the chat right now um but it's at it's at tiltify it's our tiltify.com link and it is over there um yeah, Gen, Gen Con TV put it up for us. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, and Peter has something to say. I, I'm also on Table Takes. You are also on Table yes. Takes. Yes, yes, yes. But, when, oh, but not this that? week. I'm, I'm not I'm not this week because I'm right, traveling to Colorado to see my dad. But usually I'm on Table Takes. So. And, and when would we find Table Takes, Peter? It's on Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific time 
on right here on Gen Con TV. Right here. Or if you are not catching us live or you want to look at back episodes, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com slash Gen Con video is what you need to see. Or uh, youtube.com slash World of Chaldea has all of our World of Chaldea stuff on it. I have given you every social handle on the planet, people who are watching. So just like, I can't, I can't give you any more. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so thank you so all good. for for coming on and uh, chatting about the process. Thank you to everybody who worked so hard on this particular film. <laughs> it was a weird one. Let's add a plug for Tanel Lovett. Tanel Lovett did all the amazing Tanel illustrations. Tanel was wonderful. Thank backdrops. you, Tanel Lovett. Thank you, Tanel. Uh, thank you to Bandersnatch for all of uh, the practical effects. Thank you to Zoe for working on all of the tech for us. Thank you to Gen Con for giving us this platform on Gen Con TV. Um, thank you <clears throat> to everybody at home for sticking with us during <laughs> this we're this like we definitely took several tangents and i appreciate you staying with us on that um so uh come back next week and there's more to see and uh i guess we'll see you next time right bye everyone bye friends take it easy bye